Ain't no telling what I'm feeling beyond. Hey, hey, I'm beyond. All right, Student Union Study Hall, episode seven. We've got the Sweet 16 starting tomorrow, and we're pumped. Uh, let's go ahead and get right into it, boys. Who do you guys think is the MVP of the tournament so far, or looking like the uh, most exciting player of the tournament so far, at least? Uh, we'll start with you, Austin. So, uh, as uh, the only one on this show whose school uh, is still dancing, I'm going to go ahead and just take a moment to gloat. Sick and Bears, <laughs> Sweet 16 bound for the fourth time in the last six years. So, go us. But anyways, uh, MVP actually have a guy who my Bears are going to be playing on Friday. I got Cinderius Thornwell from South Carolina. He's been lighting it up. He had 29 points, 11 rebounds against Marquette, and 24 <laughs> points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists against Duke. Granted, Duke elected not to play defense in the second half, but those are still impressive numbers. South Carolina is a team that really, everybody knew they were good at defense, but their offense was suspect all year. I watched a quadruple overtime game where I think they scored 80 points. But Didn't they, break uh, the over. Now, Sundarius Thornwell's for real. I, I like his game a lot, so he's my MVP. Luke, what about you? Oh, there's been a lot of pretty good players in this tournament, like Nigel Hayes, especially the game winner over Nova. Probably not a bigger shot in the tournament so far, but um, <clears throat> I'm going to take Trayvon Blewett from Xavier. He has two 20-point games so far in the tournament, and he's shooting above 50% from deep. And I think it was a, the Cincinnati game earlier this year, he made like nine three-pointers against him, and it was just the, the kid can light it up from pretty much anywhere on the floor. And if he keeps playing well, I think Xavier can – possibly pull the upset over Arizona, and I think they would take care of Gonzaga if they beat Arizona, so they could be Final Four bound, but I think Blewett is just the best player so far. He's also rebounding the ball, not that great, but I think he's like four and a half rebounds a game so far in the tournament, so he's playing pretty well. He's carrying his team. Definitely. I uh, agree with Austin. Austin kind of stole my boy, Sundarius Thornwell from uh, South Carolina, but you can't argue that he's something else. He keeps South Carolina in games when the rest of the team just quits on him. Uh, I don't think Austin threw out like all his stats, but I want to. I don't know if you mentioned this, but he's shooting over fifty percent from three in these past two games, which is really they'll always give him the shots, and if he's hitting, they're gonna succeed. Uh, I'll also give a little shout out to my boy Moritz Wag- Wagner Wagner. I'm terrible Wagner. with these names. Wagner. Wagner. There we go. Uh, He's just a goofy looking motherfucker, but he can play. So I'm on I'm on board with him. I'm on board with anyone who fits that goofy Dirk Nowitzki mold. So uh, yeah. Uh, next topic: Sweet Sixteen. Who do you guys think, or what's the game you guys are most looking forward to in the Sweet Sixteen? Uh, started with Austin last time, so we'll start with Luke. Uh, I think the Wisconsin uh, Florida game is going to be very fun to watch because. I didn't think Florida was that good coming into the tournament, and they pretty much just steamrolled through that first weekend. That win over Virginia was one of the most impressive games I've seen all season, especially on the defensive side. I mean, I know Virginia isn't really an offensive juggernaut, but uh, what they did, the Gators did, was pretty impressive to Virginia. And then, obviously, Wisconsin's coming off a huge win, and they've played pretty well in that first weekend. Uh, Nigel Hayes is playing really good. They're they're getting more contributions from a lot of different players on the team as well, aside from Hap and Hayes. Uh, I'm sure Koenig's about to light it up here late in the game for a game winner or something like that, but this Wisconsin team is dangerous, so I think that's going to be a fun game to watch. Absolutely. Austin? I don't even know why this is a question. Obviously, we're all looking forward to South Carolina Baylor. Yeah. Friday night, Madison Square Garden. Uh, Say the match. Scott Drew versus uh, Frank Martin, which is an old Big 12 reunion. Bears have a chance to go to the Elite Eight for the third time in the last six years. Uh, they've never been to the Final Four. This is the – I'm going to go ahead and say that this is top three biggest games in Baylor basketball history. So I, it'll be interesting to see. I think – I like Baylor's odds because normally the teams I struggle with are the more balanced teams and not teams that pretty much run their offense through one person as South Carolina does through Sundarius Thornwell. And so 
I think Baylor's got a good shot. Motley's got to stay out of foul trouble. He's gotten a lot of ticky tack ones. I know in the first game he got two moving screens in the first half and had to go sit. And in the last game he got a bogus charge call in the last couple minutes. But the way they've been playing, especially if Alfred even gets going, I like the Bears. So I'm all in on that game. That's going to be my entire Friday night is living and dying with that game. So I may be a puddle of a human being the next time you see me, but sick and bear. This is our year. I'm a South Carolina fan, so I'm on board with that. And it's also probably one of the biggest games in South Carolina's program, if not the biggest. Uh, side note, Frank Martin might be the most intense human being I've seen in just my whole life. He scares, He looks like he's in the military or some shit. Scares the fuck out of me. But <laughs> go, like, could you imagine playing for him? Like him chewing you out on the sideline if you take a stupid jumper? I have no problem with it. I think I like it when coaches call out players for playing like shit. No, I'm all about it, but I'd shit my pants. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I will take highlight a different game. I uh, am really excited to see Press Virginia and Gonzaga. I think it's one of Gonzaga's biggest tests of the season with three point spread. Vegas thinks that so. I think Gonzaga might come out and torture and surprise some people. But, you know, then again, way West Virginia has been playing, you never know. So definitely one I'm excited to see, but definitely going to stay away from it as far as gambling goes. Uh, next topic, who do you guys have uh, in your Final Four now, in your revised Final Four, now that all our brackets have been busted? Uh, uh, sorry, Austin? Yeah, speak for yourself. Oh, my bracket... Gosh. Although two of my final four teams have already lost, my national championship game is still intact. I had North Carolina over Arizona. I'm going to keep riding with that. So, round out the final four, I initially, I picked Purdue over Kansas, but the way Kansas has been playing, I would be surprised if they lose that game. So, I'm going to go ahead and say Kansas makes the final four. Although, they, it, I think they're either going to lose to Purdue or they're going to make the final four. They're not losing to Michigan. They're not losing to Oregon. But... So I got Oregon, North Carolina, Arizona, and you know I got to go with uh, my Bears. This is our year. There's really no other way to put it. It's been our year for a while. I uh, never doubted Scott Drew. He's always come through in March, and there's no way that this is going to blow up in my face by picking them. So, uh, yeah, I'm sick of Bears. That's my final four. I still got UNC over Arizona in the title game. Okay. Um, I'll, Luke? I'll take... Arizona, North Carolina, Kansas, and Wisconsin. But the bottom right portion of this bracket is absolutely insane still. They have still have uh, UCLA, Kentucky. Could easily come out of that. North Carolina didn't play very well against Arkansas. And maybe some questionable questionable calls late gave North Carolina the win, but they're still alive. And uh, I think they're still a little hungry from last season after dropping a heartbreaker to Villanova like that. So I'll take North Carolina as the winner, but I think they're going to take on Arizona in the championship game. Hey, Twins, right. we agree on something. You're a Twins fan? That might be the, <laughs> might be the first time in history. But uh, and I am obviously taking South Carolina. They're, they're going to make I, – I think they have what it takes to make it there. Uh, Kansas still have the easiest route. Kentucky – I think they can pull. I think it'll be them and UN, either them or UNC, but they pull it out because SEC has been handed to the ACC. And then I like Gonzaga, or and then finally I like Gonzaga, and I say Kentucky beats South Carolina. Who cares? Uh, I love but it. But SEC finals. I never thought um, I'd hear that. Yeah, I know for real, but. Uh, now we can move on to our favorite topic that – oh, never mind. Actually, we have, we have one that has been being debated in the student union group chats all week. I'm and so I know excited. you guys are ready for it. I'm so excited for this. We've been at each other's throats, holding it back, waiting for this moment. Who is the best conference in the NCAA right now? Luke, I'm going to let you go first so you can make your terrible <laughs> case, and then I'm going to pick it apart. Go ahead. All season long, the Big Ten has been disrespected by every other non-Big Ten fan, even some Big Ten fans, and I can understand that. <laughs> if you don't watch any of the games in the Big Ten, some of the best basketball in America, you don't watch it, you're seeing just pretty shitty records thrown out there by top-tier teams 
but you don't look at the bottom of the conference and you don't see what's actually in the roster. You look at, I, I wrote an article this week, and it was about how the Big Ten has been good all season. Rutgers has three guys that are 6'9 up, and they're a handful. Like They won the most games this season in the Big Ten since they entered the conference, and congratulations, it was three or four games, woohoo. But that's, that's just showing how good the bottom of the conference has gotten over the last couple of years. And we look at the top of the conference, they're losing these games to teams that, as I mentioned, have improved. They're not the shitty Rutgers team that everybody used to curb stomp when they first entered the league. They're a team that can compete night in and night out. And I just think they're disrespected, especially the middle of the pack teams. Austin, you've said there's two or three good teams in the Big Ten then a bunch of mediocre teams. Coming into the tournament, was Michigan one of your good teams? No. Who were they? Purdue, Wisconsin, Maryland? No, I mean, I think... I'd say Maryland was decent. I never really was all in on them. I would say, I would say Michigan State, Purdue, and Wisconsin were the three teams I thought were decent. Michigan's gotten hot lately, but I still don't think they were that good all year. I mean, getting hot at the end of the year doesn't like Holy Cross last year went 0 and 9 in conference play and made the tournament. I don't think that makes the Holy Cross was a good team last year. They just got hot. But I disagree. I think these teams have, from top to bottom in the Big Ten, I think it might be the strongest conference in America. I know you strongly disagree with that. You would say the the Big 12 is that good, but I just don't see it. They have – I really don't. It's going to be ran, run by Kansas maybe for the rest of our lives. I don't see that ever happening as long as Bill Self's there where another team overtakes it. It's so one-dimensional of a conference. I just can't see them taking it. The Pac-12 was pretty weak. I mean, USC, how many teams they get in? Three, Four or five? And USC snuffed by a pretty shady SMU team. I mean, I I don't see them doing it either. And I've never liked the SEC. I just thought they were weak. No offense, Liam. Congrats on South Carolina. They were uh, hanging in there. Yeah, but it's always been a Kentucky Rams yeah, conference teams. with an occasional Florida appearance here or there. But I think the Big Ten can make a serious case for being the best conference in America this year. All right. Well, that was cute. Now, I'm going to give you a couple numbers here. <laughs> To tell you, I'm just going to eviscerate your argument. First of all, the Big 12 is the best conference in the country. Uh, that is according to Ken Palm, which is far and away the most reliable basketball source stat. The Big 10 is not the second best team. They're not the third best team. According to Ken Palm, they're the fourth best conference. And so they're not as good as the Big 12. They're not as good as the ACC. They're not even as good as the Big East. And... The fact that you're basically saying because a couple teams got well, got hot, and have played well in March, that somehow that means that the conference that was god-awful all year was actually good is a travesty. Minnesota was, what, the second-highest seeded team in this bracket, and they got the brains beat out of them by Middle Tennessee. I don't understand where you're coming from. Next, I'm going to throw out uh, the big – the, top tw- five strength of schedules based on how good everybody you played was this year. Of the top five, guess how many of them are Big 12 teams? Four. All five. Oklahoma <laughs> State, Oklahoma, <laughs> Iowa State, Texas, and Baylor are the five toughest comp- toughest schedules in the country. You want to know why that is? Because they played in the toughest conference. The Big 12 also has 30% of its league. There are only 10 teams in uh the Big 12, 30% of them, three, West Virginia, Baylor, and Kansas, are still dancing in the Sweet 16. Another number, zero. That is the number of Big 12 teams that have been upset in the tournament so far. Every single team that was supposed to advance has advanced. Uh, next stat, I'm going to say there are five teams in the Big 10 that are worse than anybody in the Big 12. Rutgers, Ohio State, Penn State, Illinois, and Nebraska – were so much worse than the entire Big 12 this year. Those would have been the bottom five teams if the Big 12 absorbed them and became a a 15-team league. There's absolutely nobody in this corner. Let me rephrase that. There's one one person in this country that thinks the Big 10 was the best conference in basketball this year, and it's Luke. There's no (laughs) argument against the Big 12 being the best conference in basketball. It's been the most dominant all year. It's been the most dominant in the tournament. Ride or die. Big 12, it ain't even close. I, well, wow. You want to throw some of these stats at me, but, okay, they're all but one of the Big 10 teams was upset, and the Maryland spread couldn't have been that much. If you're going to throw Minnesota at me, they were 
a point and a half underdogs against Middle Tennessee. And I'm talking like, seating wise. Seating wise, yeah. But I'd, I'd rather rely on Vegas for odds than a shitty committee that I am not on board with. That's another problem. Yeah. These a lot of these seedings or a lot of these teams were misseeded. Like you bring up Minnesota, they shouldn't have been a five seed. Wisconsin shouldn't have been an eight seed. Yeah, because they suck. Wisconsin should have been. No, not, not Wisconsin. Minnesota is a terrible basketball team. That is why they shouldn't have been a five seed. But guess what conference they play in? The Big Ten. So that's why they were overrated, because they had a good conference record, but they played in a terrible conference. That's not fair to say Minnesota's terrible. They have a really, really good young team. Nate Mason's going to bring them back next year. and They can make no, they're, they're talking about this year. They were not good. They weren't horrible this year, though. And they Granted, you probably could have switched Wisconsin and Minnesota. That was just a horrible seeding on the committee's part, and they've done a pretty shitty job of that this year, but I just I the, from top to bottom, I don't see how you could say the Big 12 is the best. I respect that you can you can say how? that the Big 10 isn't the best but I don't see how you can say the Big 12 is What conference is better? From top to bottom? Yeah. It's total totally opinion, so it doesn't matter. There's, you can't not a team in the Big 12 that you can look at and say, oh, we're playing this team tonight. That's an easy win. If you're in the Big 10, Texas. if you're playing Rutgers or Penn State or Nebraska at home, you can pretty much go ahead and throw your walk-ons in to start the game. You're not losing that game. If you're in the ACC, if you're playing Boston College at home, you're not losing that game. If you're in the SEC, if you're playing, I don't even know who was really bad this year. I don't follow it that close. Mississippi State. You can go ahead and basically just pencil that as a single team. Every team in the Big 12 was capable of pulling big upsets, as they all did this year. I mean, the second worst team in the conference was Oklahoma, who won at West Virginia, who's in the Sweet 16. Big 12, top to bottom. Like I said, the pack, the Big 10 has five teams that are worse than anybody in the Big 12. Whatever. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> sitting over here eating popcorn, enjoying this show. This is a battle, and... I hate that it comes to me because I don't want to disagree with either of y'all because this is getting personal. <sighs> Breaking it down from a from a tournament perspective, you can look at it this way. There's the Big 12, Big 10, Pac-12, and SEC, all with three teams left. I personally think that the Big 12 has the best chance of a team winning the tournament out of those. I think Kansas has the easiest route, and West Virginia can surprise some people with a win over Gonzaga. At the same time, Big Ten performances, like especially Michigan, uh, that's where I start to think that the Big Ten is over, like they've outperformed expectations, and that's why I like to give it to them. But I also want to throw a shout out to the SEC because they took down uh, Duke. I mean, Coming into this, I thought that the UN, I thought that the ACC was the best conference, and now only one of those teams remains. And so, to see a team like South Carolina competing with arguably the top team in the ACC just shows that it's really anyone's game this year, and all of these conferences have been competitive. So, no answer for me. Wow. But uh, yeah, I'm, that's how I'm doing. I'll, I'll decide after it happens. Okay. But. Uh, <laughs> but uh, now we're going to move on to our favorite topic that should technically be dead because Duke is dead. Uh, every week we do, is Duke back? Have we figured out how we're going to do this? Are we going to say, will Duke be back? Or are we just going to say, I put, is was Duke, Duke back. back? Was Duke back. Okay, That's what was I Was Duke back. Okay, I like that. What, so, was Duke back, Luke? Hell no, they weren't. This is my <laughs> victory lap. I've been saying it all year long. They haven't been back. They're a fraud. Coach K can use all these tactics that he wants to. Uh, sit Grayson Allen for a game here. Pretend like you hurt your back. Whatever. But Duke hasn't been back all year, and I've been saying the whole time they're going to lose in the first or second round of the tournament. They made, a, they made a nice run in the ACC tournament, and they did get me to say last week that Duke was back, but I was mistaken. Then I, I was, I had uh, fallen. Did, to, you did say you it. Said it. You said it. I had, fall, I had fallen to the fact and that they were hot. Rocker. But also, I fell into I, earlier, a few episodes ago. I did say if Duke would win the ACC tournament, I would say they were back. So they did do that. So I, I yeah. followed up with that. But I was right way before that. I don't know. I must have been drinking before last week's show or something. But absolutely not. This team is not back. They've been so. 
they've been reliant on three people this year, maybe four with if when Emil Jefferson decided to show up and play well. But they they usually only play six or seven guys, and that just can't stand up. They just weren't deep enough all season long, and I think that's what got them. No argument there. Uh, Austin, what do you think about Duke? Yeah, Duke is back in Durham because <laughs> I said it last week. I thought they were back, but I also said I thought they were going to flame out pretty early in the tournament just because people love to ride the hot hand of, oh, this team just got hot and won their conference tournament. When in reality, there's not usually a ton of correlation between conference tournament performance and uh NCAA tournament performance, a lot of times it's actually the opposite because that team is tired because they just played five games and everybody else just played one or two. But Duke, what ultimately killed them is they decided not to play defense in the second half against South Carolina. They gave up 65 points. South Carolina didn't score 65 points total in most of their games. And they scored 65 points and a half against Duke. I watched the end of that game. There, It seemed like every single time it looked like a re- – pickup game where you've been playing for about two hours and everybody's tired nobody wants to run and you're kind of winding it down and it's just like you get a rebound and there's one guy runs down for a wide open layup and then just whoosh just like over the top wide open like dunk or layup it's where it didn't even seem like they were trying the only one that really felt like they wanted to win was luke Kennard, and he fouled out couldn't do everything by himself so yeah r.i.p duke it turns out the egos on that team were too much to manage so yeah also, very glad as a Baylor fan that Duke lost that game because I did not want to play them. It's a terrible matchup. So bring on South Carolina. Yep. Obviously, Duke not back. Uh, a little sad we didn't get a little more controversy out of him this tournament. One good thing that comes of this is that Luke Kennard meme of him laying on his ass crying. <laughs> I can't park that's my good. Porsche. That's here. good stuff. <laughs> that's good stuff. That'll be that'll be around for a while. Uh Finally, let's move into our picks of our locks of the week for the Sweet 16. Uh, who wants to start with this one? Uh, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, I'll take uh, West Virginia. Wait, first, what's the record? What, so everyone knows how to take it? Three and three. Two, two okay. game winning streak. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Solid. Solid. I'll take West Virginia plus three against the Zags. I think Gonzaga's about to hit a world of hurt and full court pressure. That is Bob Huggins. Uh, I just, I love watching Huggins on the sideline. One of the (laughs) most entertaining coaches to watch, but this full court pressure is going to create a lot of turnovers. I think they're going to smother Karnowski. They're not going to be able to get him going. They're going to have to rely on the perimeter too much. Uh, And I'll take West Virginia plus three. I like that. Austin, I am uh, four and two on these picks. I was on a four game winning streak and then I uh, lost last week, but I'm still being Luke. So that's good enough for me. I got Florida minus two against Wisconsin. Florida's 20 and 12 against the spread. Wisconsin is 16 and 16. Uh, also, Wisconsin played in a terrible conference. I can't remember which one it was, but I just know it wasn't very good. But uh, anyways, I, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I like Florida a lot. They've been playing really well. They played well the last 10 minutes of the East Tennessee State game, and they just eviscerated Virginia. Virginia put up 39 points in the game. If they play like that, I don't really know what area Wisconsin has an advantage in. I mean, they've got good players. They've got Happ. They've got Nigel Hayes. They've got Bronson Koenig. But I just think top to bottom, Florida's a deeper team. If they're going to win this game, they're not going to win by one. They're going to win by at least two. So, yeah, give me the Gators uh, minus two in this one. There you have it. I am starting to think that I shouldn't give away my picks for free because I'm 5-0 and <laughs> and just handing out money these days. But I like South Carolina plus three and a half against Baylor. And one of the main reasons I like it is because I brought it up before the show and Austin said, I, I don't bet on my school, which just sounds like a cop out. Of it. He doesn't want to lose some money. So... I think I really like South Carolina because of that. As I mentioned earlier, Frank Martin is the most intense man in the NCAA, and Sundarius Thornwell is just a bad man. So, Cox plus three and a half, you heard it here. Uh, Any thoughts on that? 
My only thought is Kevin Stallings is not happy at all that you just called Frank Martin the most intense man in college basketball, and he's <laughs> probably going to come to your house and murder you tonight. So be ready for that. Locking my door, locking my door. But that's it for uh, this week's student, e- or student Union Study Hall. We'll see you guys next week, and uh, hope we have a good Sweet 16. Take it easy. Sick and bears. Ha, <laughs> ha,